Welcome back. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Box Ring, episode 8. If you zoom in, you will see our next pass, the Skull Occlusion Pass. Okay, but before we start with this episode, let me explain to you what I mean by Occlusion Pass. Now, I'm, I'm using kind of a wrong term here, but I just didn't know how to name this thing because it's just something that I just made up for, for my own... Uh, workflow but it's it's probably the closest thing to an occlusion pass now don't confuse it with an ambient occlusion pass an ambient occlusion pass is, is a little different what i have here is basically it's sort of like an ambient occlusion pass but it's kind of softer and it has a light direction or kind of a light direction if you check out here you can see that we, we have a shadow here and here it's bright uh, same here and here you can clearly see that the light is coming from the top here i use this pass in almost all my projects and it's it's the the difference is slightly but i think it really adds something and i want to show you the difference but before i do that i'm going to show you how to actually create this kind of pass here now the most important things when you want to create this uh, pass or this look you need a spotlight and you need a renderer which is set to software renderer enable light has to be on and enable shadows has to be on as well now we need to use a spotlight because in Fusion the spotlight is the only light that can cast shadows and uh, of course we also need to set it to soft shadows. It won't work if you leave it at none. We need the soft, we need the soft shadows. But that alone will not give you this look here. And I will show you what happens if I turn off this uh, replace material. So this is what the renderer usually look like. And now the trick with all these things here, the trick is to use this replace material and to deactivate the receive lighting. I showed this in other tutorials as well. So I just repeat for people who uh, see this here for the first time. Uh, so you need to add the replace material between your objects. This is the object and before the renderer. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's after this uh, merge 3D or not. So you need to hook in this replace material. Now I turn it on, but you will see that we still don't get this look. We get that look only if you turn off receive lighting, but you need to leave the shadows on. This is important because what you see are basically the soft shadows only. And that will give you this uh, light direction. Also be careful, this method um, will heavily depend on the resolution of your object, of your mesh. If you have a very low resolution mesh, it will show the polygons. The higher the subdivisions are, uh, the better the result. And here you can see what I mean. You can see now we get all those polygons here. This is, you know, those triangles. Uh, it really shows. Now, it won't show as much uh, once we turn off the receive lighting. But it's still advised to have a higher resolution, if possible. Okay, and now let me show you the difference, actually. So for that, I will first show the final result. So this is the final result here. It's just a little test project that I have going on here. And here, this is where we use this occlusion pass. And now I will just turn it off to show you the difference. And you might say, hey, there's almost no difference, but take your time and um, check out the difference. It's subtle, but I think it is an important detail. I don't know what you think, but for me, this image without the um, occlusion pass, it looks a little bit more flat. If I turn it on, you can see that the shadow here becomes a little bit stronger. This this uh, curvature here pops out a little bit more. It's not much. It's really subtle. And uh, I believe that this definitely adds to the feel of this whole thing. So, yeah, this is how I use the occlusion pass. And I can also show you what I actually did. So after the renderer, this is what I get. And then... Uh, put it into the, then I adjust the brightness a little bit, but, but I use, but I use this mask here that I get from the ambient occlusion, you know, and I, I use it to darken a little bit the corners here. You can see this. And then I use another brightness contrast. And this time I use the 
the KVT, the KVT map I use to brighten up the the edges, and then I color correct this whole thing, make it a little bit uh, bluish to to simulate some sort of lighting. Yeah, and then I add this um, to my result here. Maybe I can show you directly where I merged this uh, together. So you can see here with and without, with and without. And you can see those two things here, those two parts, even they start to get a little bit more depth. You can see here, those values um, are very close. And as soon as I activate um, the occlusion, you can see that those values from this part and this part and the part below it become much more um, contrasty. The same here, this part and this side part. I hope this shows a little bit how to, how this gives it a little bit more depth, if I can say so. So now that we talked about this, let's continue with Lebuck's ring. Hey. First, we need a Merge 3D. Branch out from this router, copy over this renderer and hook in the Merge 3D. Alt-click here to create a router. Good, let's just quickly view the renderer and you can see darkness. So we need light. We copy over this light here. Hook it in and adjust the settings. For the red, 0.469, for the green, 0.606, and for the blue, 0.666. Add a 7 to the intensity. <laughs> yeah, I know. Here we don't change anything, and now these adjustments are super subtle, as you can see. These happened along the way, while creating this scene. It's very difficult now to tell you exactly why I set this little value here, there, and some of the things I did were n noticeable on certain passes, but in the final result, due, due to uh, several color corrections and effects I applied at the end, um, some things were just not noticeable anymore. Yeah, some people call me a butcher. Okay, let's adjust the shadow. Our favorite parameter, the multiplicative bias. Set it to 10. And finally, the softness to uh, 0 0.02. Now comes the replace material trick. Add a replace material. Shift insert and in the material tab, uncheck the receive lighting checkbox. Look closely, because this is not 100% white. It contains subtle shades and we can make them stronger by going into our light and set the shadow density to 1. Great, this is it about the sort of occlusion pass. Uh, it was probably the shortest episode, but don't worry, there's still a lot coming. So guys, my name is Vito, I'll see you soon. Until then, enjoy what you're doing. Wanna say yo ho ho yo ho ho say yo ho ho 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 yo ho